This segment of Hack 5 continuing to transfer files between two computers without USB, Ethernet, Bluetooth, or Wi-Fi. And this time, we're going old school and using audio. Oh yeah. This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by GoToAssist. Now, continuing my search for esoteric ways to transmit files between two computers, of course, I looked at the obvious, like, hey, we could use, you know, serial, Bluetooth, but no, I want to really go analog here. And I thought the last one with QR codes and webcams were pretty good, but you know what would be even better? Using something basic, like DTMF, or Dual Tone Multifrequency. You guys may remember that as touch tone from old school landline phones. Oh yeah, hearkening back to my phone freak days. Or the other idea was even to use CW, or Continuous Wave. The hams in the audience know what I'm talking about. You probably know it as Morse code. Unfortunately though, Morse code, while still as awesome today as it was in 1836, it doesn't support more than case insensitive, insensitive, those insensitive cases, they're all uppercase, alphanumeric characters. So yeah, PGP messages, obviously, that's not going to work. They rely on ASCII, which includes uppercase, lowercase, numbers, letters, you know, special characters. And I, I, I think it's still worth mentioning, though, that Morse code is pretty cool and useful and, you know, can be transmitted and received with Linux pretty easily. Uh, the FCC used to require it for amateur radio licenses, uh, but Morse code proficiency was actually dropped in 2007. But still, it's really cool. Uh, I figured that I could, uh, I actually fired up an old copy of Ubuntu, did this because of some esoteric driver problems uh, with Pulse Audio and the old school OSS. That notwithstanding, check this out. Uh, there is an awesome uh, program here. Let me find it on my desktop called CW Text, right? CW Text is wicked. Uh, basically, you can use it to, let's see, echo hello world to CW Text. And there we go, we get our dits and das. So uh, with this, all right, sure, that's just ASCII in the command prompt, but uh, CW Text also comes with CW PCM, or Pulse Code Modulation. Uh, this allows us to actually generate audio out of this. So, for example, if we were to go ahead and echo hello world into it with a couple of parameters and uh, pipe it to slash dev slash DSP, again, that's the reason for the old version of Ubuntu, um, we would actually be able to get it to you know, make some fun tones. So check this out. Echo SOS and pipe that into CWPCM with a frequency of 3200 and a uh, word rate of, I don't know, 100 words per minute. And then send that over to slash dev slash DSP and take a look. Yeah? I mean, of course, we can do that with something a lot longer like Hello World. I'm sorry, but I just think that's damn cool. It's not really going to be helpful in this scenario because what we really want is ASCII. So, yes. Effectively, to transmit ASCII from one computer to another, we're going to have to move up a little bit as far as modern encoding schemes are concerned. And while, you know what, this is actually an awesome opportunity to break out sound modem and to get into AX25 networking, I'm going to actually save that for another day. Instead, we're going to turn back to the old days of bell tones and frequency shift keying. That's right. We're going back to baud rates and modems. So a modem is just a modulator demodulator, typically over a plain old telephone system. You may remember your old 56K modem, but before that, the original modems used a really primitive technique of just alternating between two audio frequencies with you know, the corresponding two different bits, say a one and a zero. These symbols were actually measured by their baud rate, or how many symbols per second. The first commercial modems were the Bell 101 in 1958 and Bell 103 in 1962. They operated at 110 baud and 300 baud respectively. Man, that Bell 103 was pretty sophisticated with a, a pair of frequencies for the calling party and a separate pair of frequencies for the answering party. A little trivia here, it's actually really cool that um, the reason for all of this was because back in the day, only AT&T equipment could be connected to the telephone network. And no, I'm not going to descend into a rant about proprietary networks and state endorsed monopolies. Just suffice it to say, the brilliant hack of the time was actually to use an acoustic coupler. Basically, 
some suction cups with a microphone and a headset that allowed you to, you know, if you've ever seen the movie War Games, you know what I'm talking about, pick up the handset, put it on this device, and just acoustically, like we're about to do with two machines, transfer some data. Ah, oh, makes me so happy. Okay. Now, to give you some perspective, at 300 baud, the average HD episode of Hack 5 weighing in at about a gigabyte would take a mere 330 days to download. A megabyte is about eight hours at 300 baud. So, yeah. Thankfully, we're not transmitting anything so huge as megabytes. We're just doing short PGP messages. So, this actually should be pretty sufficient. And for that, I turn to an awesome Linux utility called Minimodem. So, let's just go ahead and dive right into the demo. I've set up this machine here with Minimodem. And if I cat message from, for Bob text at ASCII there we can we can see there's our uh, PGP message there and just for illustrative purposes so that we can see this on one screen and not have to do anything fancy with the video switcher I'm going to send it to itself but this the same principle applies if I were to say hold this machine to that machine or anything like that we're really doing it over the air as it were so uh, in this case what I'm going to do is set mini modem on one terminal on the left to transmit and on the other terminal on the right to receive. So let's check it out. So on our receiving computer, we do mini modem, tac tac rx for receive, and then ASCII for our uh, encoding type. And we're gonna do it at 110 baud because we're going classic here. And then on our sending computer, we'll do again mini modem with the transmit flag, again ASCII for encoding type and 110 baud. And so when I do this, I'm not going to really get anything other than a cursor. But if I type, say, hello world, and we'll go ahead and set our receive, when you hit enter, oh yeah, there we go. And we'll close both of those out. So. Of course, uh, you know, the message integrity could be increased if from our computer to computer we used an audio cable. It wouldn't make as good and as annoying as a demonstration, but it is still really fun. Let's go ahead and continue this and send over our PGP message. So in this case, I will cat message for bob.text.asc, see that file right there, and pipe that over to mini modem. Transmit, we'll try 300 baud this time, go a little bit faster. Uh, we'll actually do ASCII 300 baud. And then over on our receiving computer, just change that over to 300 baud. And... All right, I'm going to stop that for a sec. And you can see what's going on here is we're actually not getting a really good signal. I mean, obviously, we're not using a cable between these or anything. And so we'll see we get, um, we get little dots when it's not sure what exactly the data was. So you know, here we got uh, 4, O, we're not sure, D, C, H, we're not sure. And over the air from one computer to another, really what I've found in my testing is that you need to use a baud rate of 110 or less. Actually, it gets really fun when, say, for example, we'll just echo uh, something, we'll, we'll echo high over at, say, 10 baud. And actually, if we do it this slow, you're actually going to hear the bits. This is pretty amazing. So there we go. Is that obnoxious? Yes, it is. But is it cool? Affirmative. What do you guys think? Are you ready to hot glue your USB ports and take a step back to 1960s analog technology? 
let me know in the comments or email us directly, feedback at hack5.org. You can also find my PGP key, hack5.org slash keys slash Darren. And be sure to check out, I have a bunch of further reading in the show notes over at hack5.org. Uh, I'm really excited about this. We're going to try some more of this stuff later with uh, Free Space Optics, so stay tuned. But first, we're going to take a quick break and thank one of our sponsors. It seems these days everyone is working in the cloud from so many different devices. And if you're a systems administrator, if you're working in IT, you know this can be a huge challenge. But that's why I'm so stoked about GoToAssist by Citrix. It allows you to remotely support anyone from anywhere on any device. Okay. So GoToAssist has three essential support tools all rolled into one integrated cloud-based platform. There's the GoToAssist remote support that lets you provide live or unattended support to any PC, Mac, or mobile device from anywhere, even from your iPad or Android. And get this, with GoToAssist monitoring, you can proactively identify issues before they become a huge headache. And you can easily keep track of all of this with a GoToAssist service desk. So sign up for your special 30-day free trial. Visit GoToAssist Com. Click on the Try It Free button and use the promo code HACK5. That's go to assist.com, promo code HAK5. It's time for a Technolist photo of the week. This one comes from Kevin. He dragged a tough book all the way through India and he sent us a series of photos from his trip. He went to a security researcher con in Goa. It was a great ride. He jerry rigged a lot of crap and made it through the country with about $40 a day, including buying three prepaid cellular lines, two 3G datas, and one voice. And he had no reservations or bookings either. I, Kevin, I have to applaud you. That's crazy. I don't know if I could go somewhere without having reservations. I'm way too organized. <laughs> you can always send your photos over to feedback at hack5.orgs. Thank you so much, Kevin. Gonna do it without you guys. And remember to use the subject line Technolus so that we can find them easily and we can share them in next week's episode.